That's why Paul said, I consider everything I have as dung for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Because anything you love, the devil will use it to bargain you. And that's why when you become a disciple, you have to let go of everything. So that the devil will not have anywhere to bargain for your soul. Everything is given up. And anyone God gives you, you are a trust fund. You are holding it for him. It's no longer your own. That's self-denial. Now, when you have come to self-denial, then you go to the next marker. This is where I want to talk from tonight. And I'll be speaking for 10 minutes so that we enter into practicals. There are three other markers of a disciple, but I can't touch them. I will touch only one. The other marker for a disciple is that a disciple follows him. But I can't discuss that now. But if you read your Bible, you are going to discover that the disciples always followed him. They followed him to where he was tried. They followed him to strange territories. And some even followed him to the cross where he was naked. They were not ashamed of him. If you can't follow him everywhere, you are not a disciple. A disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. So what is pursuing in life is where Jesus is going to. In Luke 18, 15, they followed him to where he was tried in the house of Pilate. In John 6, 3, they followed him to a mountain, a desolate place where there's nothing to desire. They followed him there. In John 18, verse 1, they followed him to the cross. So every disciple is a dogged follower of Jesus or the one Jesus has put before him. You will follow till the last. That's what makes you a disciple. As I'm talking to you now, the Holy Ghost is going to give some of you fresh wine. You will begin to be drunk, drunk in the spirit. Because there's a battery that is too dead that needs to wake up. Zambia is looking for the overcomers. You cannot be dormant. The fire must come alive again. The river must flow again. And so I prophesy over you now, every dead dimension of God in your spirit, awake! Elohim Adonai But I'm seeing time. Ah, we're out of time. I wanted to talk to you about generated power. There are two types of generated power. One is called Iskus. Another one is called Kratos. See, Dunamis and Esusia works with demons and circumstances. But when you want to deal with principalities, you need another dimension of power. So what you need is not Dunamis and Esusia. Dunamis and Esusia deals with demons and circumstances. But when you are dealing with principalities and powers, you need Kratos and Iskus. If you study Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, he said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. And he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The word power of his might is kratos of his iskus. It's when you are strong in those power that you can now put on the whole armor of God and fight against principalities. If you study Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18 to verse 21, you are still going to see kratos and iskus there. What is kratos? Kratos is a type of dunamis. But you see, for you to activate Dunamis, you pray through. So if I pray for 10 hours, Dunamis will be activated. But for you to activate Kratos, you will have to pray consistently. So a man who prays for 10 hours can go to a meeting, demons are expelled, changes are created. But you see, he can come back from that meeting and the devil can attack his family. But if you want to walk against principality, hope you know you cast demons out, but you don't cast principalities out. Principalities have bodies, they are fallen angels. So they don't need to possess men. So when you are working with Exusia and Dunamis, you deal with demons and circumstances. If you want to work with principalities, Ephesians 6, 10, Ephesians 1, 18 to 20, where principalities are in question, you are going to see that is Kratos and Iskus. Kratos is consistent power. So a man who wants to work and deal with principalities must pray at least every day for 30 minutes. If your prayer is not consistent, 
you cannot deal with principalities because principalities are not demons they work with laws of the spirit when they come they possess a territory they create a culture in that territory that's why you see that most of our miracle services we cast out demons we open blind eyes but the corruption in society remains so abortion is going on Pornog uh, prostitution is going on because the people the princes responsible for abortion are not demons they are principalities the beings responded responsible for pornography and are not demons the princes responsible for prostitution are not demons they are falling angels those ones control territory so you must have beyond do that means to deal with them so the man who can talk and a territory opens is one who does not just pray through but he has a consistent prayer life so some pray 20 minutes every day and they have done it for five years some pray 30 minutes some pray one hour and they have done it for five years if two of you come for a meeting the one who prayed through can do impartation but the one who prayed for five years for 30 minutes if he talks you will see the impact after two weeks you will now discover that the government has changed that's why you have to know god beyond your context for some of us who travel i go to certain places everything is prayed i go to another place place everything is prophetic i go to another place everything is miracles if you know god only by one dimension you'll be in trouble so you must grow your faith beyond the context and i said to grow your faith beyond the context, you have to go to the second level of faith. And so what you do now is that you will start studying God's faithfulness in your life. So you discover in the last five years, this happened, I did this, God answered. This happened, I did this, God answered. So because of that, anytime there is a challenge like this, I now know what to do for God to answer. When the doors were closed against me six years ago, I gave a seat, the door opened. Four years ago, I needed a contract, it was trapped. I gave a seat, the door opened. So now, anything that has to attack my finances, I know that if I give a seed, my faith will unlock it. So now I know God based on his faithfulness to me in the past. So because of that, even if I'm not in the community of believers, I can still trust God. And if I trust God, I can still get answer. So you will move from congregational faith level to experiential faith based on God's faithfulness to you. But you also still need to leave that level. And I said the highest level of faith in God which is also a dimension of the knowledge of God, is when you come to, it is written. So you move from congregation, you move from your experience, and take the word of God, of God the way it is. Because it is written. The Bible says, heaven and earth will pass away. He said, but not one jot or tittle of it will pass away. So if you start operating with God based on it is written, why men are cast down? You can say, there's a lifting up. If you start operating with God based on it is written, even when the earth collapses, you will stand with God because you are no longer standing on circumstances. You are no longer standing on experience. You are standing on the word of God. So if you want to know God in the corridor of faith, you must include all your experiences in scripture. This is why we tell people that if it is extra biblical, it's a risk. It's not because there are not things you, are, you can't see that is not in the Bible. There are many encounters you can have that is not in the Bible. But if it is God you want to work with, in order to stay within the confines of precision and order and accuracy, you must reduce it to Bible so that your faith will not fluctuate. Heaven and earth will pass away, not one jot or tittle will pass from the scripture. So if you want to know God by faith, you move from congregational faith, you move from personal faith level, you come into faith based on the word of God. That's the second level of knowing God. The third level of knowing God, I said, is to know God by consecration. And so if you want to know God, you must build a consecration. And I also gave us three levels of consecration. I said the first level of consecration is prayer and the word. You cannot know God if you don't spend time in prayer and if you don't spend time studying. This is what the disciples did all their lives. They were praying, they were studying. In Acts 6 verse 4, Peter was speaking. He said, it is not meet for us to give ourselves to tables. He said, we'll give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So they gave themselves. They didn't say we will study. They didn't say we will pray. They say we will give ourselves to it. That means prayer and study is what owns us. That's what defines our life. So if you want to walk with God, you must build that consecration into your life. It doesn't matter if you're an apostle, a prophet, a businessman, or a governor. Everybody must pray and everybody must study if we will know God. This is why you study. This is why you pray so that God will keep renewing your mind to know what is available to you. The second dedicated power we have is dunamis. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, not many days from now, he said, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and dunamis, and you shall be witnesses unto me. You see the way Jesus was operating. You, mean, you must have power before you witness. 
you will receive the Holy Ghost and dunamis to be witnesses unto me. What is dunamis? Dunamis is potential power. So why exousia is power of antonym, dunamis is potential power. So dunamis is resident on your inside. But for dunamis to work, you must provoke it. The gem that is giving us light here has something inside called dynamo. No matter the fuel you put in that gem, it will not work until you turn the dynamo. When you turn the dynamo, after a while, the dynamo will pick. If the dynamo picks, then the gem begins to generate electricity. So in Ephesians 3.20, the Bible says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what you ask for a thing according to the power at work in you. So if dynamis is not working, God will not be able to do. So the reason many people carry power and die is because they don't know how to activate it. So why you activate exousia through revelation? You activate dynamis through spiritual engagement. So a man who wants to walk dynamis must learn how to pray through. You must pray until you pray through. If you pray and the dynamo peaks, you will know. That's why I was telling you yesterday that for one person, it may take six hours. For another person, it will take eight hours. For another person, it will take ten hours. But by all means, if you want dynamis to work, you must pray through. Because that thing is like a machine. You activate it. And so a man who knows dynamis will not just wake up and confront a demon and say, I have dynamis. Get out. Dynamis is a power that creates change. But for that power to work, you must activate it. And the way you activate it is to engage it. And there are many ways to engage it. You can engage it through speaking in tongues. You can engage it through worship. You can engage it through the Rema word. But by all means, if you want to work dynamis, you must activate it. And so when, you, when I'm going for a meeting, for example, and I want to change things in people's lives, I don't just wake up and go for that meeting because I've read the Bible. I've read the Bible, but the dynamo is not working. So I will have to lock myself indoors. Sometimes I worship for three hours. As I'm worshiping, I'm crying. I'm crying. Sometimes I'm playing a video. I'm seeing somebody moving in power. And as I see some dimension, the dynamics in me start working. Sometimes my stomach starts shaking. It starts shaking. And the point comes, I get drunk in the Holy Ghost. And I'm alone in my room. As I'm praying, sometimes I start running in my room. I start running. Sometimes I start singing. Until a point comes, the thing becomes like a river. It starts running over. When it enters that level, if I go for that meeting, I know. The power was moved, must move, whether the devil likes it or not. So dynamics is delegated, but you must activate it. You have a mechanical gen in your house, you can be in darkness until you own it. If you don't own it, the generator is there. It can change darkness to light, but you will be in darkness. So the reason many Christians, although they have power, they are not working in power is because the devil gets them too busy to activate it. It takes power to be a disciple. It takes power to advance the gospel. It takes power to glorify God. It takes power to change the stories of men. understanding things is the color of suit suit don't cast out demons it is what is on the suit that cast out devils and you know what the apostles did they charged themselves so much peter did you want to when you read the bible find out the message peter was entering the temple his shadow didn't heal anybody but when peter was coming out of the temple the bible said the shadow of peter began to heal the sick what do you think happened there's an overflow of dynamics when he entered the place of prayer, he had overflown his boundaries. See, some of us are rusty. Where we are now, we will need 40 days fasting to begin to feel that energy. Because the thing is rusty. Debris have covered it. Some of us, where we are now, we may need to pray for 10 hours for one week for the thing to come alive. And see, if it comes alive, you will know. You will feel it. Because you may not feel exousia, but you must feel dynamics. Sometimes dynamics comes on you like fire. Sometimes it comes like cold water. Sometimes it runs through you like electricity. 
There are times when I'm praying and my stomach begins to shake. I know that this power has overshadowed my soul. It's now on my body and it's shaking. Sometimes my hand is burning and you are in your room. You are, you are twisted. The thing is on you. you. So you start looking for where to offload it. So when you come for the service, you say, take. It's because something is happening. You can't contain it. The battery is overcharged and you don't want to explode. So you share with some people. What you call impartation is to offload what you carry on some people. So that they will use it for some time. You have too much. But you see, when you grow, you won't even need it. Because you too can charge yourself to that level. He said, you dearly beloved, building up yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying, praying, praying. Somebody's battery is about to wake up. Somebody's battery is about to wake up. And you have what we call Iskus. Why Exusia is authority based on revelation? Iskus is authority based on obedience. Because I can have revelation of who I am in Christ. Cast out a demon and still fornicate. So I can deal with demons by revelation, but I cannot deal with principality by revelation. If a principality comes, it will tell you who are you. How dare you challenge? Hope you know when Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, a priest went to him and said, if you are the son of God. They are not moved by feeling. They are moved by the weight of your obedience. That's why the Bible said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. And he said, when your obedience is complete, then you can avenge all disobedience. So if you want to grow in authority, you must begin from revelation of who you are in Christ, but you must graduate into obedience. You must come to a point where you don't violate God. Because if you are violating God, you can cast out some demons. You can walk in a gift, but you cannot talk to the prince of the land. Only the man whom the devil comes and checks and finds nothing can address him. The Bible said, Jesus talking, he said, the prince of this world come to me and he found nothing. So when you talk, because they have no stake over you, they have no choice but to obey you. So people who walk in authority don't only have exousia, they also have iskus. Exousia is revelation based on your position with Christ, but iskus is your obedience based on the authority of the Holy Spirit. If those two does not come together, we cannot change our territory. That's why we do videos, we do miracle services, but we don't change territories. Because very few obey God around their sexuality, around their finances, around their way of life. Obedience is tiny. And when the princes come, they are interested in your weight, the weight of your obedience. If you move from that level, then you come to the level of purity as the second consecration level of knowing God. The Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19, it said, the standard of the Lord standeth sure. It said, therefore the Lord knoweth them that are his. It said, anyone that nameth the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity. If you don't depart from iniquity, there's no way you can walk with God. In 2 Corinthians 6, 17, it said, come out from among them. Touch not the unclean thing. It said, they that bear the vessels of God, they must be pure. So if you want to know God, you have to keep walking in purity. Because there are realms you will enter, your gift will not be enough. You know, Isaiah was a prophet until he had to come to know God in the throne room. And he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was operating by gift. He was hearing the voice of God. He thought he knew God. He said, I saw the Lord. There are many people in the world today who are using gifts. They can pray for the sick. The sick is healed. They can give prophetic word. It doesn't mean they know God. If you know God, it will show by your level of purity. Because anyone who stands in the courts of Abba must be holy. You must be pure. You can't go there. He said, Thou, O Lord, out of a purer eyes. He said, Your eyes cannot behold iniquity. That's why among men, we may celebrate gifted people. But in the spirit, they don't care about your gift. When you come, they are looking at your garment. Is it pure? If your garment is not pure, you can't stand in the courts of God. And a national prophet appeared in the throne room. And they saw glory immediately. Nobody asked him. He started confessing. Because you know, dear, you don't give word of knowledge. Everybody knows everything there. So it's not a place to come and say, I saw this. No, nobody will be moved. Everybody has understanding there. So when you come there, it's your purity that they rank you with. And without questioning the prophet, he say, I'm a man of unclean lips. Forgive me. I'm a sinner. I'm in the wrong place. How can a national prophet not be able to stand? <laughs> Most of this thing we are doing here, calling ministry, that you are gathering people does not mean God know you. Because if you have a gift, God does not need to send you. If I stay here and I start praying for the sick and they start being healed, people will come because people need healing. If I'm here and I start giving prophetic word, people will come because people need direction. But God knows the ones he sent. He said the standard of the Lord standeth short. The Lord knows them that are his. So the people God sent, 
they mark his purity. He said, if a man purges himself, he said, then he will qualify to be used of the master. So it's your purity that tells whether God sent you. And when we get to heaven, you'll be shocked that many global ministries were not sent. Don't compromise because everybody's compromising. Like Joseph, stand your ground. If you need to run from Potiphar's wife, run. What you are doing is that you are preserving your garment. A day will come, God will send you to Pharaoh's court. Because Joseph was gifted for 30 years, he was not sent. It is God that will send you after you have passed the test of purity. I'm telling you, most people who are doing ministry today, they are agents of the devil. I'm telling you, 2,000, 3,000 people are gathering. Go and check. They have disverging 30 people. And those 30 people have wrecked 1,000 families. So what is happening there is the devil. There's a stage. They are calling the name of God, but it's a stage for the devil. Not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. Every one of us who is born again, we carry power. The problem is that the devil has changed our language. So instead of chanting in the Holy Ghost, we are complaining about house rent. Instead of blasting in tongues, we are complaining about who is gossiping us. All of those things are theatrics of demons. When they are gossiping you, pray. When there's no house rent, pray. When they are attacking you, pray. If that river begins to flow, it will swallow all your problems. It will swallow them. But if you face your problem, the river will never flow. Do you know how many battles we face? For two years, everybody was talking against me. You think I will go and lock my door and start crying. Oh God, hear what they are saying. Oh God, what will I do? The more they talk, the more we are sent. The more they talk, the more we are sent. When you hear people talk against you, tell yourself, I refuse this arrow from entering my soul. Makatika Akakatoria, Bararados Tabakina. The Bible said, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So Jesus expects you to pray in tongues until you become like a drunkard. Be drunk with tongues. You pray until your legs can carry you. And you are in your room, you are staggering. You are staggering. After a while, you will discover that you were actually not staggering. You were dodging traps. You were dodging arrows. When you are running, you are not running. You are moving by the Spirit. And when they thought they have finished you, you will come with another version. When they thought you have gone down, you will come with another version. When they thought they have created all the roadblocks. See, the spirit realm is a limitless realm. There are some men the devil will use, they go and create roadblocks so that you cannot pass. They create roadblock of relationship. They create roadblock of finances. They shut down your contract, shut down the spread of your ministry, shut down your relationship. You know what you do? When you pray, you will not need to roll on the floor anymore. You don't need to drive, you don't fly. Roadblock can affect car, not a plane. So all you need is to ascend. When you ascend, you will look at the roadblock and say, okay, is that where they kept it? I have gone far. I have gone far. When they check five months later, you are doing 10 times more than you were doing when they started fighting you. And the point will come that we know is a waste of time to talk against you. It's a waste of time to fight you. It's a waste of time to try to destroy you because they do not know who we are. When we pray, we become invincible. It's there as the wind blow it. Thou listest not from whence it cometh or whence it goeth. It says, so are they that are born by the Spirit of God. Your boss can rise up against you. Go and fly in the spirit. Ascend and leave him behind. Ascend. You'll become bigger than the company. That's how power works. So if you want to address things by authority, delegated authority, you must have revelation. And you must also have activated spirit. In Luke 24 verse 49, when Jesus wanted to leave, the people wanted to rush out and say, we have seen you cast out devils for three years. We were with you. Everybody know we are your friends. He told them, don't move. If you move, you will die. Lecture notes, don't cast out demons. Lecture notes, don't advance the kingdom. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. The reason is because the moment you announce that you are a disciple of Jesus, you become a danger, an endangered species. Every demon will want to pull you down. All the forces of darkness will want to pull you down. Ask Christians who walk with Jesus, they will tell you. The moment they say they want to serve God and they start praying, their business will crash. They will suddenly start having problems with their bosses. Their health will come under attack. Because if you announce that you belong to Jesus, hope you know that there are two governments on earth. 
there is the government of light and there's the government of darkness and as you know every time there are two opposing government if you know you don't have power just lie low because the day you identify with one government the other government will turn you to an enemy this is why if you say you are a disciple of jesus you must have what power in acts 1 8 he said not many days from now he said you shall receive the holy ghost and power and you shall be witnesses unto me so if you have not received power you cannot be my witness if you have not received power you cannot be my disciple so everyone who says he's a disciple must press for power listen it is not ambition to desire power power is for safety and power is the only means by which you will glorify god because the kingdom of god suffered violence only the violent can take it and when they take it they take it by what by force if you don't have power you will die in evangelism the woman carries power the young man carries power but he never activates it and every day he's working with potential up and down he has the ability to cause cancer cancer will shrink but it's a potential he has the ability to change the fortune of men but it's a potential even the ministry is sinking and the devil will come and put a movie before him he's watching he's watching he puts pornography he's watching and the more he watch the more dormant he become but those of us who know how this power work we don't allow anything enter there that is not of god and so we create a gate around our soul we create a gate around our heart we wake up in the morning singing in the spirit in the afternoon we are worshiping in the night we are praying in tongues and even when we are tired we cannot pray we are hearing somebody else pray so sometimes you enter my room and playing tongues because when a man of prayer is praying he transmits energy so now i know i cannot pray but i'm hearing somebody else who carry that you know this thing is in, is in measures there are some people who are heavyweight when they start praying as you are hearing it after a while the energy begins to move it begins to move you who were tired and couldn't pray before after 30 minutes you see your legs start doing like this because when tsunami starts, you can't be in one place. Your legs start shaking. After a while, you stand up from your bed. After a while, you start chewing. After a while, you will now see that even you, you start transiting. You that was lying down like a lamb, you become a lion. And then you jump up. Beruate, evova katua, rakida, takakato, oseado duat, eti takapalut, asisanota, eriado duat. You know what you are doing? You are roaring in the spirit. And when you start roaring, the devil will say, Ah, the lion is awake. Let's hide. Let's hide. You will see that battles will go on their own. Because the way the lion takes over the territory is not by fighting, it's by roaring. The lion wakes up and you hear, oh. Every adversity knows that it's a mistake to go there. I'm awake, I'm alive, and I'm in charge. As you charge yourself, when you step out, the spirits will be seeing the fire on your head. They know who carry fire. And you know when you carry fire, they fear you. You know why? The way the devil was judged was by fire. So anybody who carries fire reminds him of his judgment. He said, I will cause fire to come out of you and consume you to ashes. So when you show up and you carry fire, the devil knows. This is why the messengers of God, the Bible said, he make it his angel spirits, but his ministers, they are flames of fire. So when you carry that fire, you torment demons. You torment them. Did you not read about Jesus? When he came down after fasting and prayer, he entered the temple and the demons began to cry. Why have you come to torment us before our time? Because they were touching the fire. They were touching it. Because now the power has activated and it's flowing like a river. Because out of their bellies shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. And so you are going for a meeting. Before you enter that meeting, the place is already overflooded. And so the, the, the power was running like a river. Anybody that touches it will be cleansed. That's how the Christian life should be. This is why if they beg you to pray, it means you are not ready. If they beg you to worship, it means you are not ready. Why do you think when I come, I say, where is Sister Temiyo? It's not, it's not about her. It's about what comes out of her spirit. There's an activation. There's an activation. So there are times when you can lock yourself in your room for the whole day. You gather playlists. There are playlists of war. There are playlists of ascension. There are playlists of encounters. You gather them and you are playing them. One play for four hours and you are just under that atmosphere. Mingro Paragas, Cecilia Paraladuas, Veveraka. 
Rakadia to dash. And sometimes you can be in your room. The river will flow from Nigeria to Zambia. That's why they call you. It's not because of your face. It's not because of your skin color. It's because anywhere the river enters, your dominion comes there. And nobody can stop you. And when you come, the demons will know because they have interacted with your reality before you came. Influence over nations. When they talk, the nations shake. It's because God has put his dread upon them. There is a kind of authority they have that is not revelation. It's character. And so if our generation want to wield that level of power, we must adopt the way of humility, of brokenness, of kindness. Every virtue that comes from the Holy Ghost, we must build it if we have influence. Otherwise, the kings won't hear us. The rulers will not hear us because it takes influence. But when you have influence, even when you don't invite them, they will come. They will be the ones that want to associate with you. What do you think is wrong with our generation? Every preacher wants to go to government house and collect envelope. It's a shame. The days of the prophets of old, kings came to them. And if they have to go to the palace, they are going to warn them. And if you think they are clowns, try to touch them and see what will happen. A, a prophet went to warn a king and the king said, hold him. As he stretched his hand, the hand paralyzed. On the spot, the hand paralyzed. Because he didn't just come because he was bold. He came by the influence of God. Heaven is backing him. How do you think Moses walked to Pharaoh? You think it's by revelation or by speaking in tongue? It's by commitment. The Bible told us in Numbers 12:3 that Moses was the meekest of all men. He was the humblest of all men. So because of that, God invested something on his life. So much so that even Pharaoh could not think of killing him. It's a taboo. We want to walk in power. We must have delegated power. We must have generated power. And we must have entrusted power. Tonight, God has sent me here to impact dimensions of power. Are you ready? Ah, I've seen, ah, time is gone. How did we come here? What I want to do now will be limited. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost for two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. I will just give one command.